Hello everyone and welcome back. In this lesson we are going to continue the implementation of our loading service. Let's remember that this is a shared service that enables components such as the course dialog component or the home component that we see here on the screen to be able to turn on or off a loading indicator that might be placed at a completely different level of the Angular component tree where, for example, the home component is situated. In our case, we have here a loading component that is placed here at the level of our top router outlet that needs to be turned on and off by various different components of the application in a maintainable way using this shared loading service. So the key component of our design is the loading observable which emits observables of type boolean. So true if the loading indicator should be shown and false if it should be hidden. Now the question is how are we going to define this loading observable? Well, the key ingredient for defining custom observables in any application in general is RxJS subjects. So a subject is very similar to an observable in the sense that we can subscribe to a subject just like we subscribe to an observable, but the subject has the extra capability of emitting values. So with an observable, we only have a subscribe method, but we have no way to control the values emitted by the observable. That is not the case with a subject. With a subject, we can define exactly when this observable here can emit the values true or false. Let's then define here a new RxJS subject. We are going to be calling it the loading subject. And we could be tempted, for example, to use the RxJS default subject class. However, in general, I think it's better to use the behavior subject class. The behavior subject class is a special type of subject that remembers the last value emitted by the subject. So any new subscribers are going to receive the last value or the initial value in case that no value was emitted yet. This is better in general for asynchronous applications because we don't know the exact timings of the life cycle of each component. We want to make sure that any component that needs a value emitted by the loading observable to be able to receive at least the last value emitted even if the subscription only happens after the value was emitted. So we're going to be defining here the parametric type of the values emitted by this subject which are going to be booleans just like the loading observable. And in the case of the behavior subject, we also need to provide here an initial value for this subject, which is going to be the value false. So by default, at the beginning of our application, the loading indicator should not be displayed. So we are going to be emitting initially this value of false. Now let's see how we are going to create the loading observable from the loading subject. If we have a look here at the API of the loading subject, for example, using here the loading on method, we're going to see that the loading subject also provides a subscribe method. So in that sense, it's very similar to an observable. However, we would not want to have other parts of the application to access directly the loading subject. So that's why we have made it private. We want to make sure that the loading subject is private because not only can other parts of the application subscribe to it, if it would be public, but the loading subject also provides us with the ability of emitting new values. So we have here a next operator that allows us to emit new values for our subject. So if other parts of the application would subscribe directly to the subject, they would also be tempted to use the next method in order to emit new values. And we want to avoid that. We want to clearly separate the ability from subscribing to new values from the capability of emitting new values. The idea is that anyone outside of the loading service should be able to subscribe to the loading observable and receive new values, knowing if the loading indicator should be displayed or not. However, 
only the loading service should have control over the ability of emitting the values. So that's why instead of exposing the subject directly to the outside of the loading service, we are going to instead take the loading subject and call here the as observable method. This is going to derive an observable from the subject that emits the exact same values as the subject, but it's simply an observable. So the loading observable will not allow us to control what values are emitted. With the loading observable, we will only be able to subscribe to it and get notified when new values are available while keeping the ability of emitting new observable values inside the loading service only. Using the loading subject, we can now implement very easily the loading on method. We are going to be accessing here the loading subject and we are going to emit a new value, which is going to be the value true. In a very similar way, we can implement the loading off method. So now we want to turn off the loading indicator. So we're going to be emitting here the value false. The way that this works is that the values emitted via the subject are also going to get emitted by the loading observable. So whenever a part of the application turns the loading indicator on, this loading observable is going to emit the value true. And whenever another part of the application turns off the loading indicator, the loading observable is going to emit the value false. Now, you might be thinking at this point in the course, if we already have here the ability of turning on and off the loading indicator, isn't that all we need for implementing the loading service. Why do we need this method here? Well, let's try to use these two methods, loading on and loading off in our home component and understand why this show loader until completed method is going to be very useful. Let's switch here to our home component and let's notice that we have already injected here the loading service. Now, what we want to do is to use the loading service in order to turn on the loading indicator when we start loading the courses and we want to turn the loading indicator off whenever the courses are completed. So how do we turn the loading indicator on? We do so by accessing here the loading service and calling the loading on method as expected. And now what we want to do is to turn off the loading indicator whenever this observable here either completes or errors out. So we can do that by using the RxJS finalize operator. This operator is always going to be called when the observable that we are receiving here as input either completes or errors out. So here on finalize, we are going to be accessing the loading service and we're going to turn off the loading indicator. So it's very important to use finalize in order to make sure that we wait for the load all courses observable to complete properly, which is going to be the most common case, but it's also important to handle the case when the service errors out. So if there is an error while loading our courses from the backend, we want to make sure that we don't accidentally leave the loading indicator on blocking the whole user interface and preventing the user from continuing to use the application. Let's now try out our new loading indicator functionality. So in order to make the loading indicator a bit more visible and for a longer period of time, we're going to artificially increase the time that this load all courses request takes to get processed. So if we open here the load all courses method, we are going to see that we are hitting the slash API slash courses endpoint of our REST server. Now, if we open here our server folder in our reactive Angular course repository, we are going to find that the server is a very simple express server with only a couple of routes defined. Here on the slash API slash courses route, we're going to get here the get all courses express route. So this is the server code that is getting executed whenever we load our courses. So as we can see, we can artificially increase the time that it takes to load our courses by increasing the value of this set timeout. 
let's make this for example one and a half seconds instead of only 200 milliseconds and let's apply this new delay by going here to our terminal and stopping our rest server and restarting it once again so now we have a new version of our server running where the processing of the get all courses route is going to take much longer let's then go back here to our home component and let's refresh our application and pay close attention to the presence of a global application loading indicator we are going to reload the new version of our application and as we can see here is the loading indicator as expected let's now quickly review our solution and let's focus on its reactive design so in order to have components such as the home component or the edit course component to interact with the loading indicator component which sits at a very different level of the angular component tree we have used a service in order to enable that interaction that is the loading service the loading service has a reactive api in the sense that it exposes a loading observable this observable emits true if the loading indicator should be shown and false if it should be hidden now we have the loading indicator being public meaning that any part of the angular application can be aware if a backend loading operation is ongoing but only the service itself has the capability of emitting values for this observable so the observable is derived from a private subject that is used for emitting new values using for example loading on or loading off this same loading service is then going to get injected here in our loading component and the public loading observable is going to then be consumed here in the loading component template using the async pipe and it's the values emitted by the loading observable that are going to determine if the material loading indicator should be displayed to the user or not and with this we have almost completed the implementation of our loading functionality in the next lesson we are going to complete here the implementation of the loading service by implementing the show loader until completed method this method is going to provide us with a slightly more convenient API for interacting with the loading service.